Happy Black History Month. It's no lie. I love anime. I mean, I went through uh, into all the details of how much it influenced and shaped me as a young creator and how heavily I leaned towards the various styles, even in my current years. But there's always been a glaring problem I couldn't overlook in anime. The rareness of solid, inoffensive black characters. Now look, I don't want to make this into a video bringing up those horrible racist stereotypes and tropes. No, I won't give them any more screen time. No, no, get. Hey there, fellow Night Owls. This is Anna Richardson, artist and founder of Midnight Designs. I just want to welcome you to this video. And if it's your first time being here, and if you enjoyed this content, please make sure to hit the like button. In this video, I'll be talking about some awesome black representations in anime over the years, and why I feel like it's important to celebrate these characters, as well as criticize them when needed, as we work towards bringing more black creators and animators into the field. In the past 10 years, I feel like Japan, and the world, has recognized that in this modern age, racism in the media isn't acceptable any longer, and it never should have been especially as they recognize more and more American fans as their paying audience are of African descent. With black creators across the diaspora, as well in the mother continent Africa, putting more established studios than for animations, films, TV series, and games, there's a massive hole for black characters, designs, and influences. We all know how the world loves to take black culture and use it up, but leave actual black people to eat the scraps. Well, those days are moving to the past. And I, for one, am here for it. We're slowly moving from the ignored to the contenders, and we haven't gone down without a fight. Our voices are only getting stronger, and it's looking like in some places, especially with younger creators at the helm, they care to be a part of the change. Now, I haven't interviewed these studios, unfortunately, but I've done my research, of course. I feel confident about these five characters that embody what I want to see more of in anime, and I think they're a good start. So, let me say beforehand, of course, Afro Samurai is a wonderful example of black representation. He's got the wicked badass fro, features, and his story is a And of course, there's Kalik Rung from Soul Eater. Stylish, kick-ass with the rock and fade. Bob Makihara from Tenho Tenji. Dutch from Black Lagoon is a great one too. Michiko Melanjo from Michiko Ihachin. Oh, it hurts not putting her on this list right now, cause oh my god, waifu Michiko. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> but. These guys are a bit older, and I want to talk about more current characters that are really showing the evolution of black characters in anime. Uh, also, just so you know, there's no particular order, just based on what I like about their designs and depictions. All Goon from Fire Force. Can I start by saying, wow, this one right here, this is it. All Goon has an awesome design, nice deep brown skin, thick locks, great English voice dub, and oh yeah, his name. Inspired from the Yoruba tribe in Nigeria, Africa, Ogun is a cool, powerful name to give a fire elementalist in an anime about fighting infernals. In the Yoruba religion, Ogun is an orisha, a spiritual deity that is tied to metalwork, blacksmiths, and toolmakers. He is also venerated in Haitian voodoo, West African voodoo, Santiera, and Kandoban, among many other religions. It was very cool to see a powerful, confident, and nicely designed character kick some butt and really give his enemies some go. I also felt like the animators didn't lack in any of the key scenes, and his flaming ink is so cool. I love to see it. Also, I dug the Jojo oro 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 reference. <laughs> Miyuki Ayukawa, Basquatch. So this one was a bit tough for me. One, it's an older anime, older than what I thought. But I legit never found out about this, or uh, where to watch it until like this video. <laughs> She's actually a main character with the cute pigtail with cute pigtail dreads and a nice complexion and her lips are drawn more often than not. Though I just wish they were drawn more often, period. But this anime loses points to me with the gratuitous fan service. So much fan service. Especially for how old the main characters seem to be, like maybe 16? Nah, I can't get behind that. I wish she was more than just, you know. But I do like her design, and I like that she's one of the main characters, so that's cool. Musa Kamara, Run With The Wind. I really wanted to bring up Musa. He hit my radar back in 2019. Someone had posted him, and I was like, okay, give me that. Musa is an engineering and science international sponsor student at Kansei University, turned track runner novice by his friend and fellow roommate, Haji. He lives with other roommates uh, and classmates who end up also getting roped in, just like him 
But what I love about Musa is that he's shown as being shy and sweet and patient, and even goes so far as to help out Haji with his dream of competing in one of the most prominent university marathon relay races in Japan. He also says something pretty profound, and I love when anime addresses racial stereotypes. It's prejudice to think black people are fast runners. I love that. Because it's true. The idea that black people excel in any physical sport is rooted in racism. And sports animes have a history of pulling the foreign African contender card, oftentimes with degrading nicknames and phrases. Though Musa himself is from Tanzania, Africa. Still, from his black features, low-cut hairstyle, and sweet persona, I really love how the creators and animators brought this lovable Musa to life. Canary from Hunter x Hunter 2011 version. Look at this precious cinnamon roll. Look at her. From the sweet button nose to her lovely toned lips and her hair poofs. They're so poofy. Canary is a character that isn't as sweet as she looks in terms of power level. She leveled the main character, Gon. Even though he wasn't fighting back, he still got that work from her. And proved time and time again she's loyal, steadfast, and serious. I love seeing black characters like her, the silent, elegant type. I want to see more of that from black girls in anime, even mostly because we don't really get them as often. Fair warning, I have been searching far and wide for black girl characters that I strongly want to add to this list. That wasn't older than at least a decade. It's not that easy. <sighs> There's still a lot of work to be done, my fellow night owls. Onyang Kapon, Attack on Titan. Now here's a recent black character that's definitely worth talking about. Onyang Kapon is barely a supporting character to be honest. He shows up in the final season of Attack on Titan, flying an airship that saves the day for the crew. I won't say much more. And has a wonderful deep brown skin tone, brown eyes, and a high top fade somewhat. He has piercing handsome gaze and holy sh**, two toned lips. No, 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 did they really do that? A and then when he was asked by the sheltered Eldians why his skin's so dark, he hit them with that, he who made us once thought. Wouldn't it be more interesting if there were more kinds of people out there? Well, <laughs> poet he may not be, but that was a charming and quick-witted response. And honestly, though this anime is as dark as it is deep, there's something somewhat reassuring with having characters like Oyan Kapon living his best melanated animated life, or, well, trying to, bringing up the fact that even in a fictional world that somewhat mimics our own, the world is a much better place with various cultures, views, and people to live with. These are characters I didn't dislike per se, but they had maybe a thing or two about them that I just felt like placed them here. But no hard feelings. Rock Lock, My Hero Academia. Ken Takagi, or Rock Lock, is a pretty cool hero and has a nice color scheme and design. He's rocking the freeform locks, brown skin, cool earrings. He's a hero and father to a baby that's a spitting image of him and is blunt to the point and a little grouchy. Yeah, that last one kind of is what landed him here. His treatment of Deku, Mirio, and Tamaki, well, coming from a good place, comes off as rude and abrasive. But he truly does worry for the students, and as a parent, I completely get that. But he's also here because he's shown as a caring, protective father figure and an adoring husband. And I can't get enough of great black father role models in anime. Even though his confidence can be mistaken for arrogance, he later becomes impressed and even proud of the students when they exceed his expectations. And hell yeah, positive reinforcement. GGK, Carol and Tuesday. I love GGK. I know people might expect me to bring up the ambiguously brown Carol, but I didn't like anything about her design or backstory or personality. She was very lackluster to me and mostly took a backseat to her white counterpart's feelings, needs, and wants. That's a no for me. But GGK, who was definitely a black woman, was beautiful, talented, inspiring, just simply amazing. I loved her aesthetic and flow, and honestly, she should have won the competition. <laughs> With her bunned braids, full lips, and out of this world aesthetic, honestly, listening to her moved me to tears. She seemed to have a laid back, chill personality, and it's just too bad that the story didn't include her more. Yeah. Carol and Tuesday wasn't really my cup of tea. Now there were quite a few animes that I missed. Not because I thought less of them, but it's mostly because I had to pick the ones I really found hit the mark for what I was looking for in the recent decade. But don't mind Basquash. And also because I didn't know about them. To which for the last one, I'm so sorry. I'm always on a hunt for my anime. And so here's where you can shine. Comment below and let me know. What did I miss? Who made your top list?
who deserves more shine. Also, I wanted to let everyone know that I'm on Twitch streaming late nights every Friday on Midnight the Night Owl. If you enjoyed this video, please do give a like. And if you're new to this channel, please make sure to subscribe so you can be alerted as soon as the video drops. Draw magic.